Hey everyone, this is Max and welcome to another Octa Workflows video. So in this video, I'm going to build what's called the joiner flow. So this is what happens when user is activated and then you want to automate some things when that happens. So when a user is activated, you want to send a message to Slack, you want to send an email to someone. Um, you might also want to save that information into a table. Um, so that's what we're going to build. So to start, we're gonna click new flow and then give this a name, user activated, then check this options. This is um, to enable flow history. So the first step is, you know, when this flow is triggered. So in our case, we're going to use uh, user activated event. So that's um, coming from Okta. Now we can search here, user, user activated. All right, and that's the event. Now, so this event has some information that you're getting. For example, there is the active user information and some other information. But it, you know, if it's not um, sufficient, for example, you want to get more information about this user, then we can use the Okta connection again. And we can say there is a, an action. Oops, here we go, read. There's a read user action, which reads the user information. And so this, this is where you get all the user information. Now. We actually don't need these all these properties, so we can inject them. Now, what we do want is let's see here: user name, for example, primary email and title. So this is how it's going to look. Um, the ID, I guess we have it coming from here, so we don't need the ID. So this is how it looks. Now, so let's take the ID from the event, and then okay. Now, we can um, also, and it's usually recommended to test each card um, sort of separately. And then we're going to test this card. Now, it does want the user ID. And then to get the user ID, let me just refresh this to make sure I'm signed in. Okay. Now, to get the user ID is you open any user, and then in the URL, at the, um, you'll have the user ID. And this also works for groups. And then... Here we go, we get the information, so this works. All right, so next we are going to use a compose card and create a message. So we'll say user and then username, maybe put their title. Was activated, activated, okay? So this is the message. And then we want to send this first to Slack so let's search for Slack. And then um, send message here. We want to send this to this, this our channel and then we'll send this as a bot, yes. And then we don't need the timestamp, but we do want the emoji um, icon. Click save. So the actual text, this is the text. This is, so we're gonna connect it this way. The name of the bot is going to be just user bot, for example. And then the emoji, we can make it to be a unicorn, right? Now, as um, with the read user, we can test this card okay, and say, hey, is this working? And click test. And then go to Slack and we see the message. So it's working. Um, all right, so let's save, let's save and let's enable, turn this on. Now we're going to add the email and the table in just a second, but let's test this. So I turn, you do need to turn on the flow, of course. Uh, now it does take, I think up to a minute sometimes for the flow to get activated. So, um, we're going to try running it, but we might have to trigger it twice for the, uh, flow to get activated, but let's go here. And so we've got a user here and this user is right now she's um, uh, active, but let's deactivate the user. All right. And let's go back here for a second, flow history and go back and click activate. All right, so Alicia was activated. Let's see here. So yeah, no execution yet, but we can also go to Slack. Oh, here we go. So yeah, um, 
looks like it worked. Oh, here we go. Yes. Um, so this is the um, the execution. So the um, user was activated, event was fired. Then we read the user. Then we create the message and we send it to Slack. All right. So let's um, go back. All right, so the next, we will also will want to send an email and also save this information to a table. But let's start with an email first. So add up action and Gmail, then send email. Now, one thing I didn't say at the beginning is that every, uh, every connection, um, like the, um, this, this one here, uh, the Okta one, and of course this one and the Slack, um, I already um, had an existing connection. So if you're doing this for the first time, you will need to create a connection to Slack. And then it's right here, right? So this is basically sort of authenticating against the, the, the underlying API. Um, so again, I already had those connections available to me. If this is your first time, you will need to create those connections. Uh, but email, so we're going to send this to this test account. Like this, subject is a user activated. And then if we want, we can do a little rocket. And then the message, we're going to use the same message. So this is the email. And then next, we're going to get uh, the table. So save this into a table. So first, let's save this. Let's create a table. So a table is a table is useful to for uh, for storing data um, not for a long time and also not a lot of data, but it's kind of a, a temporary fast storage in a way. Um, so you could save all the users that were activated, for example, today or this week or this month and then have another flow or multiple flows, then you know, access the table and do something with that information. So that's one example. But let's create a new table and user activated table. And I'm gonna create a new column. And the first one is user ID and it's field this type text. Now I'm gonna click add another. So I stay on this view. This is going to be email. And another is going to be title. Now create. All right, so I've got a table with three columns, and these two columns are, um, are there by default, so they're a part of any any new table or any table you you create. Okay, let's go back to our flow. Now I'm going to use function and under tables. You can see all the actions here. The one I going to use is called create row. And it's going to ask me to uh, select the table. I just need to find the folder. This is the one I just created. And so when you choose a table, it's um, going to show you the columns. So these are the columns that I want. And then for user ID. Okay, so user ID, email, and title. So for user ID, um, we have the user ID right here. So I'm gonna show you one trick um, is that instead of taking it for all the way from here, um, what you can do is actually anywhere you see ID, um, this is not much closer, but still, uh, you can take it from here. And then what's nice is that the connection will be created, uh, will go back to the original card, right? So that's kind of a, a uh, nice uh, little uh, trick. Okay, um, email is right here, and then title. I have a, I did an online meetup with ten tricks, um, workflows, uh, tips and tricks. Actually, I think it was fifteen. So you can watch that and has all these tips and tricks. Um, that uh, we, with the connecting and drag and dropping, pretty pretty cool stuff. All right, so we got the table um, and let's save. And I think we're ready to run this again. So we saved. Let's go back to our person. 
let's deactivate okay and let's activate let's see here let's go to flow history Here we go. And so we can see that uh, the email was sent and then the data was saved into a table. Now we can go to Slack again. And so we can see this is the message was sent to Slack. We can go to email. Let's hit refresh. So this is the email. All right, so this is the email and and the table, All right? So let's go here and table. All right. Um, and then we save the information to a table. All right. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to show you. Let's go back here just to quickly show the flow again. Um, so again, this is what's usually referred to as the joiner. Um, again, when the user joins, a user is activated, uh, then you can perform any number of automation. So in, in this example, we are reading the user, we're composing a message, we're sending the message to Slack, we're sending an email, we're saving the information to a table. But of course, you can add as many steps as needed and, and many other sort of automations that you would like uh, to do. All right. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.